I'm Jason McIntyre, and I'm gonna tell you how to turn 10 bucks into 10,000. I went 50, 34, and one last year betting on the NFL. I'm gonna tell you 10 bets right now to make some money. Number one, it's probably my favorite NFL bet of the season. I like the Detroit Lions. Yes, those Detroit Lions over six and a half wins this season. Folks, they struggled last year in Matt Patricia's first year, kind of a transition season. Remember, two years ago, this team won nine games. So Patricia goes out this off season and really fortified the defense through the draft and free agency. They added two cornerbacks in free agency, and this is the number 31 pass defense last season, according to the Football Outsiders. I also love what they did offensively. Danny Amendola, he knows Patricia's system from New England. I really like the addition of Jesse James at tight end and TJ Hawkinson, who they drafted in the first round. But the real reason I like the Detroit Lions this year, running back on Johnson. He was a monster last year in the first half of the season. Then he got injured and the season went kaput. They could not move the football. I like what Matt Patricia has lined up for the Lions this year. Folks, I'm taking on Johnson in all my fantasy leagues, and I will be betting on the Lions a lot this season. Give me the Detroit Lions over six and a half wins this year. Number two, I'm going under on the Chicago Bears win total, under nine and a half. Now, there's several teams I liked at the under. Houston Texans was one, the Seattle Seahawks, but I've got to go with the Bears. Folks, regression is coming. This is a team that won 12 games last year. If you followed my picks on Fox last year, you know I love the Bears, probably too much. They had a rough offseason, okay? Vic Fangio, their great defensive coordinator, he's gone. He took their defensive backs coach with him, and two players in the secondary are gone. The secondary, of course, led the NFL in interceptions last year by a mile. And this defense was incredible last year after the addition of Khalil Mack. So what's the problem? Well, first of all, the schedule is much tougher. They gotta play a first place schedule. And second, we've seen historically that pass defense regresses to the mean after an incredible season. I think what we'll see from the Bears is what we saw from Jacksonville last year. If you remember two years ago, Jacksonville, AFC Championship game, riding the defense. What happened the next year? They fell back to the pack. And folks, I don't think Mitch Trubisky can bail them out. The public is all over the Chicago Bears. They like Mitch Trubisky as an MVP candidate. I think that's extremely misguided. I've got a lot of concerns about this Bears team. I think under nine and a half wins is my best underplay of the season. Number three, my dark horse MVP candidate. Folks, it's obviously gotta be a quarterback, right? Quarterback always wins this award. Last seven MVPs have been quarterbacks and I'm sticking with one here. I'm going with the often injured Carson Wentz. Yes, it's risky. Wentz has finished the last two seasons injured. I mean, he got knocked out last year and Nick Foles had to mop up. Two years ago, Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. I just believe there's value at Carson Wentz plus 1400 simply because the Eagles are gonna be a monster. Defensively, they will be able to win games where they couldn't last year due to injury. And offensively, Carson Wentz is in a division that the Eagles should dominate. They could go 6-0 in the division, dominating the Giants, Cowboys, and Redskins. I think Carson Wentz, who two years ago was the leading candidate for MVP late into December, I think he'll finally stay healthy and capture his first MVP award. I like Carson Wentz plus 1,400 to win the MVP. That leads us to number four, my value pick to win the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles, plus 1,400. Folks, the Eagles went out and got Wentz a lot of help. Deshaun Jackson brought into the fold to help with the deep passes and stretch the defense. Jordan Howard, they got him as a running back from Chicago. I love the early round draft pick of J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, the big possession receiver who's gonna dominate in the red zone. And I love their tight end, Dallas Goddard, who had a pretty good rookie year. He will work alongside Zach Ertz. This offense is gonna be a juggernaut. And defensively is why I really like the Eagles. Last year, they were one of the most injured units in the NFL. The secondary was decimated. The defensive line, both ends were out. I think coming into the season, everybody's healthy. They have some depth, folks. Everything's coming up, Eagles. I like the Philadelphia Eagles, plus 1,400 is my value bet to win the Super Bowl. Number five, my division winner. In the AFC East, I'm going with the upset of all upsets, the New York Jets. 
plus 700 to dethrone the New England Patriots. I'm sure some folks are snickering. The Patriots have won the division, I think, 10 straight years. They've won the AFC East something like 16 of 17 seasons. An unprecedented run. It ends here. Rob Gronkowski's gone. Meanwhile, the New York Jets, all they did was get better on both sides of the football. You get year two with Sam Darnold. He's partnering with quarterback guru Adam Gaze. I love the addition of Jamison Crowder. Obviously, Le'Veon Bell will add a new dimension to what was a pretty putrid offense last year. The offensive line has improved. The Jets' defense went out. They got Quinn and Williams, the best interior lineman in the draft. C.J. Mosley will captain the defense at linebacker. Folks, this New York Jets team, you can sleep on them all you want, but at plus 700, there is real value for them to win the AFC East. Number six, a long shot to win the College Football National Championship. Listen, this is not much of a long shot. Everybody has Clemson and Alabama in the title game, one of them taking the crown. Uh Uh-uh. I've got Georgia plus 650 to win the national title. I know I'm going to be on an island here, folks, and I get that. Can anyone take down Alabama and Clemson in back-to-back playoff games? Well, if anybody can do it, it's Jake Fromm and Georgia. I love what Georgia returns on the offensive line. Probably the best offensive line in the SEC, one of the best in the country. Running behind them, DeAndre Swift. He no longer is splitting carries with Holyfield. He's in the NFL. Swift is going to be dominant. This is a guy who has the chance to hit 2,000 yards rushing behind that offensive line. And the reason is because their receivers, well, they're not very good. They're not very experienced. Their top returning receiver was recently kicked off the team. Tough spot there for Jake Fromm throwing the football. But when you look at the running game, nobody's going to be able to stop them. Defensively, they'll be good. They do need to step it up on the line. Only 24 sacks last season. But if anybody can take down Tua and Alabama, remember, the last two meetings with Alabama, Georgia has led for the bulk of the game before coughing it up late. Oh, that SEC title game cost me some money. But I like Georgia plus 650 to win the national championship. Number seven, a college football win total I really like. The Washington Huskies over nine and a half wins. Folks, when you look at the college football teams, it's all about the schedule. And Washington's schedule is full of cupcakes. We know the Pac-12 is down. The Washington Huskies are going to be favored in every single game this season. They will not play a ranked opponent on the road. Now, I know there are some questions on a defense that loses nine starters. Only two starters return for Washington on defense. And, of course, on offense, you lose Jake Browning, the veteran quarterback. But I like Jacob Eason. Appears that he's going to win the job. He's the transfer from Georgia. Big-armed kid. He's going to fit in well in the Pac-12. Again, he should do well against a pretty weak group of defensive opponents. There will be a tough game against Oregon. They do get a bye week before the Utah game. Washington's going to be favored every week this season. I think over nine and a half wins is the play. Number eight, my Heisman sleeper. Folks, DeAndre Swift of the Georgia Bulldogs is in for a monster year. We know they're going to be running the football. As I said earlier, the pass game could start off slow with all the new receivers they're working in. But when you look at Swift's numbers, if he's able to get 1,800 yards, 2,000 yards on the ground, now he does have a five-star recruit who missed all of last year coming off an ACL injury. He'll be getting some carries late during the blowouts. But I think Swift is a legit Heisman contender when you look at the aspect of Tua and Trevor Lawrence, they're both going to be there. We get it. But there's no value in betting on them because you've got to pay a big price to bet on them. So I do like DeAndre Swift plus 1,000 as a Heisman Trophy sleeper. Number nine, my NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. Give me David Montgomery, the rookie running back from Iowa State. He's going to be playing for the Bears and getting a lot of touches. At plus 1,300, I think there's value because I don't believe Mitchell Trubisky will get the job done offensively. Now, I know earlier I said I didn't love the Bears. I think their defense will regress a little bit. Their defense won like three or four games for them last year. That's not going to happen this year. I think the Bears can still win eight games, and Montgomery could rush for, I don't know, 1,200 yards and win the Offensive Rookie of the Year. I I know everybody loves Kyler Murray here. Folks, I don't know if he's going to last the whole season behind that putrid offensive line in Arizona. So that's why I'm going with David Montgomery 
the running back out of Iowa State. I think he's going to have a very good year with the Chicago Bears. Give me him as the Offensive Rookie of the Year, plus 1300 What you've all been waiting for, the 10-team parlay, $10 bet wins you over $10,000. Here we go. I'm going with the under 10 and a half wins on the New Orleans Saints this season. I'm going with over six and a half wins on the Indianapolis Colts. I'm taking over nine wins on the Green Bay Packers. I'm gonna go under six and a half wins for the Oakland Raiders. I'm going with under four and a half wins for the woeful Miami Dolphins. And here's a long shot. I'm going with the Detroit Lions plus 1,200 to win the NFC North. I definitely have to make an Antonio Brown bet. I'm going under 11 and a half receiving touchdowns for Antonio Brown. Now in week one, I'm taking the Pittsburgh Steelers getting six and a half points at the Patriots. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens, a little chalky, favored by five in Miami. And I'm also taking the New York Giants getting seven and a half points in Dallas. There you have it, a 10-team parlay. You make those 10 teams your picks, you win over $10,000 on a $10 bet. Good luck.